What's up, everybody? This is MJ, and welcome to our early version of the Friday training broadcast. I'm grateful that you guys are joining us today for this amazing training. But before we get started, I wanted to remind you about an amazing series that we have starting next week. It's going to be streaming live right here, wherever you are viewing this, starting on Monday, March 8th, because this is Women's History Month. And so we have an amazing lineup of 10 powerful Black female CEOs who will be right here sharing their experiences, what turned the tables for them, how they were able to move from where they were to where they are and beyond. And so we're excited to be bringing that to you live. You do not want to miss any of these broadcasts. This Monday, we have Melissa Hughes and the list just goes on and on. I'm going to try to pull up my flyer real quick. Let me see if I can do this. Okay. I, I got to remove myself. Hold on. Wednesday and Friday of each week from March 8th all the way through the end of the month. So do not miss it. So today we're going to be talking about the key to surviving your day job while chasing your dream at night. So if you're anything like I was, you knew that you did not fit in in the traditional workplace. You always had that entrepreneurial spirit, always were trying to do a little side hustle or sell something you know, out of the trunk of your car or on the weekends or in, in the evenings. And it's not just always because you needed the extra money, right? Sometimes you sell things, for, if you're selling things for money, that's just something that's a means to an end. But I'm talking about when you know in your heart of hearts, you were meant to be in the corner office, but not just in the corner office of somebody else's company, in the corner office of your company. But because of how our society does not intentionally prepare the masses of people who could possibly benefit for in, for entrepreneurship. Instead, we train them to be employees. There are so many would-be or aspiring entrepreneurs that are in day jobs, that have day or night jobs right now, building somebody else's dream instead of your own. And depending on how long you've been doing it, how strong your entrepreneurial spirit is, or maybe how negative the workplace environment is where you are. Maybe they don't pay you a lot. Maybe they pay you okay, but you're just not fulfilled. Maybe you're underappreciated. Whatever the reasons are that the workplace is not great for you, it can make it difficult to get up and go in there every day. You know, I mean, it's a it's a common you know, joke or meme or trope that you hear in our in our society, in our culture about living for the weekend and dreading Mondays and that cycle. And I can remember being on that cycle. I can definitely relate to how it was to be living for the weekend, meaning that you just kind of coast on autopilot throughout the week, waiting for Friday or whatever your Friday is when you get off a day or two and you don't have to go in there, which I find to be a very unfortunate way to live your life. You spend the majority of your time at your job, whatever it is you do to make a living. You spend the majority of your waking hours there, 40, 50 hours a week. And so to be in an environment that does not completely thrill you, that does not challenge you in ways that you want to be challenged every single day, that is not the way that you want to live. It's, you know, you're only here however many years you're here what an awful testament to be there and always only living for the, the last two days of the week or the last day and the first day of the week and not truly flourishing in what you do for a living. So let's say you realize, you know, I don't want to be like that anymore, MJ. I want to work for myself. While you still have your day job and you're chasing your dream at night, we're going to talk about at least four keys to surviving and really thriving in that space until you can make that leap into entrepreneurship. Because if you don't have these keys in place, you could find yourself with a side hustle for years, selling things for years, doing your MLMs and all those other things for years, but never quite turning the corner 
on full-time entrepreneurship, working and building your dream for yourself. So the first key that you need to have to survive your day job while you're chasing your dream at night is to obsess over your dream. Now you know what it means to be obsessed. Sometimes you get obsessed over a TV show and you binge watch it or you watch it religiously every time it comes on television. You know what obsession means. You need to be so obsessed over your dream that you eat it, you sleep it, you think about it, and you live in a space as if it has already come to pass because it is a universal fact. It's a universal truth that whatever it is that you focus your mind on becomes your reality. Indeed, it is your reality in the present. And so if you spend, I don't want to say spend all of your time focusing on your dream, but it needs to be in the background. Just like my, my shelf is in the background right now, my two lamps, the dream, what you want needs to be in the background of everything that you do. Every waking moment needs to be lived from the perspective of obsessing over your dream as if it is your reality right then, because that's what's going to, that's what it's going to take to make it become a reality. And when I say your dream, I'm not just talking about the means to the end to have your dream because sometimes the business you want to build even though you love what you do what you will do in your business the boutique that you want to open the, the products that you want to um sell in your store usually that is still a means to the real end which is to create the lifestyle that you want to have for yourself and for your family if you're married if you have children or parents that you take care of or whoever is in your purvey Whatever that is that you want to experience that you can't do right now where you are in life, that's the dream. If it's something you want to do to change your community, to have, you know be able to give to causes you care about on a large scale. And so that's why you need to get your boutique or your shop open so you can make that money and get that dream to come to pass. Then that's your dream. And so you need to be razor focused on what it is that you want to have and not waiver. See, it's easy to say, oh, I want to make a million dollars. That's usually the most common answer I get from people when I ask them, what's their dream? I want to make a million dollars. It's almost become cliche because it seems like just a, a big number that most people think is out of reach. And so, yeah, it sounds like a good dream for me to aspire to. But when I look at them, what they're doing, when I look at what they are focusing their mind on day and night, they're focusing on not having a million dollars. They're focusing on the scarcity in their life. They're focusing on the, the poverty. They're focusing on the lack. They're focusing on things they can't do or have, have believed the false belief that they can't do them. They're focused on what's not working. They're not obsessing over their dream and what it will be like once they hit that place or once they arrive in that space. Because guess what? Success is not a destination. It's not an end result. It's actually a space that you live in. And so there's many places where you can be successful. And it doesn't always have to be when I make a million dollars. You know, as soon as you quit your job, as soon as you're out on your own, that can be success for you. If you decide that's what it is, because setting yourself free from your cubicle prison, that's the first that's the first big success that you can give yourself. So it's not even a monetary amount. It's what that lifestyle is you want to live. Is it that you want to be able to put your kids to bed every night and wake up with them and take them to school and do all these things that you normally have to miss out on because they're with the babysitter or they're with their other parent or they're with your parents or wherever they are because you're at work. Whatever your dream is, you need to obsess over it. What will it feel like? When you actually are there, that's what you need to be focused on because that's what you will manifest. If you focus on how terrible things are right now, you will get more of that. And that could indeed be why you're still stuck with your side hustle, with you know selling 10 or 15 products a month and all that kind of stuff. If you want to get to the place where you actually can not only survive your day job, but actually get to the place where you can leave your day job. If that's your dream, you've got to be laser focused on it. And when you are laser focused, here's how it affects your job. When you see the light at the end of the tunnel, when you know you're on your way out the door, you, know, you may not know when, you may not have a date set, but when you know it's inevitable because you're actually working towards it in a way that's getting results, the stuff that bothers you right now about your job is going to roll off your back like water off a duck's back. Because, see, the thing is, what gets us so down in the muck about 
being in places where we don't want to be, our jobs or whatever that is, is because we don't see a way out. So we think this is our reality and there's no end in sight. And so it gets to us. But you know how it is when you know, think about on Friday when you know you're about to leave for the weekend, how you <laughs> how you be in a better mood on Fridays because you know in a few hours you're going to be out of there for the weekend. The way you feel on Friday afternoons when it's about time to leave, you need to live in your dream in the same way. It needs to always feel like Friday afternoon from the perspective of your dream so that you can so you can survive your day job, not go in there with the attitude, but go in there with the, I'm almost out of here. Let me just work this work while I need to until it's time for me to go. So obsess over your dream. The next thing you need to do to survive your day job while you're chasing your dream at night is to change the people you are around. Now, I know most of you probably heard that statement that says, if you can't change the people you're around, change the people you're around. And that is absolutely true. But in another, on another spinoff of that, it's not even about you trying to change the people you're around. Maybe you're okay with your friends. Maybe you don't have a problem with the people you're around but those aren't the people you need to be around to get to your dream. What is, uh, there's, there's so many sayings, they always come to mind, but I never quite get them. But it's something about you can't soar with the eagles when you're pecking around on the ground with chickens. The thing is, your the people in your circle, your friends, your family, your associates, your acquaintances, the people in your community, the people at your church, the people down the street that are not on the same path that you are on of wanting to have entrepreneurial success and build a legacy of independence and, and, and all those things you want to have. If they are not on that path in the same way that you are, you need to distance yourself. Now, I'm not saying go out here and cut off your whole family, but guess what? A lot of the people who in general, they mean you well, right? They're not trying to hate on you. I'm not talking about haters. I'm talking about people who mean you well, but because they don't understand entrepreneurship, because it's not their journey, they can't support you through this. They can't understand why you would take on the risks when you have a good job. Why would you want to start a business and take a chance on it and failing when you have a good job? You better keep your good job, girl. These are the types of things that get in your ear and get in your head and can sidetrack you from what it is that you were called to do and what you were what you are known to do. See, people who have an employee mindset no shade, but they don't have an entrepreneurial mindset. And you need to limit the what, how much you expose your dreams to those kinds of people. You can't engage in conversations about the future with some people who you can talk about other things with. When you talk about, I'm going to make a million bucks and I'm going to retire my parents and I'm going to go to Turks and Caicos next year. And they don't understand how you're going to do that. They're like, they want to limit you to what their what they feel their abilities are not always from a negative space in their mind, but from a space of preserving you and keeping you from harm and from pain. So they may even sidetrack you and derail you from your dream, not meaning to just because that's the mindset that they have. And so you need to get around people who are actively pursuing what you are trying to pursue. If you're trying to pursue a boutique or a shop, which is all the people that I work with, if that's what you are trying to do, you need to be around other people who are pursuing businesses of that nature. Because if not, you can waste a lot of time and energy on things that are sidetracking you from your goals. You don't have to completely cut them off and go through your phone and be like, yeah, don't talk to me anymore. I'm trying to pursue my dream. You know, you don't have to be that person, but you do need to give less of your uh, bandwidth to the people who cannot actively help you to stay on track to achieve your dreams. You have to create a new circle. You have to create a new network. You have to have people that understand what it's like to dream what seems like insane dreams, but be completely in your right mind. And not everybody can do that. Your family can't do that. And a lot of times the people, people closest to you, they will judge your dreams based on what they believe about you. So if they've grown up with you and they've decided, oh, she on, she ain't about nothing. She she's always dreaming. She's always talking about nothing. It'll never come to nothing. If that's what they think, they're going to judge your business idea, your dreams by what they think about you. And they're going to try to talk you out of it or they're going to do other things to sabotage in a direct or indirect way. You don't need that energy. It's not enough, though, to, to distance yourself from that stuff. You need to build up with a group of people 
who are going to cheer you on and who understand and speak your language, who can, when you are ready to fall off the cliff, who can pull you back from the cliff and get you back on track. You need that community. And the thing is, you're still working your day job and certainly the people at work, you can't talk to them. And so if every day you go in there and of course, you're surrounded by people who are helping to build your employer's dream and you're doing that job where well, you can't talk to any of those people about what you're trying to do unless they happen to be a, a friend in your personal life as well. So then you have this this whole time um, during the day when you are around these people and you can't really share your whole self, can't bring your full self to work because if you did, you'd be talking about your dream. And so you need somewhere to go to let off some steam and steam in this case is not always negative. It's not about anger. It's about letting off the steam of your dream and of what you're doing and the challenges you're having so they can help you to stay on track. You have got to change the people you're around. If you are ever going to survive your day job while you're chasing your dream at night, you've got to get a different group that you spend your time around. And then the third thing that you need to do uh, in this space is that you need to get in positive right action. Now, this is a big one because if you are trying to start a shop or a boutique, invariably people want to run out, buy a bunch of stuff, put it on a website and hope that Google drives business to them. And while Google, when it's when it's optimized, can help quite a bit with driving business to you, there are a lot of things that go into building a business on the scale that you want to build it on that have nothing to do with putting products on a, on a website. You have to be in positive right action. You have to have a step-by-step -step plan for what to do to build a real business. Again, maybe it's a side hustle for you right now. And if that's okay, then that's okay. But if you're trying to take it to the six and seven figure level to where you can quit your day job and move into a space where you work for yourself full time in the future, you need to do more than just have a Shopify. You need to do a lot of infrastructure, build a lot of infrastructure for your business in order for it to succeed. Most businesses, most small businesses that open, which uh, the statistic is that women of color, most of whom are probably black women, but there are other races in there. But women of color are responsible for 87 percent of all 89 percent. Excuse me. The number went up recently. Eighty nine percent of all new businesses started every day, which amounts to about seventeen hundred new businesses every single day in the United States are opened by women with this color skin or some other tone that qualifies them as women of color. But guess what? 70 to 75 percent of all businesses started closed within the first five to 10 years. The reason being they didn't have the groundwork laid properly. They didn't either. They didn't know what they were doing or they knew some things, but they didn't know everything they needed to do. Or they didn't have someone walking them through the process, you know, walking side by side with them. Most for the most part, entrepreneurship is a lonely journey. You don't usually see people who have a lot of folk around them to help them make decisions. You are head honcho in your business. You will be head honcho. You will be the one in charge of your shop and your boutique. And if you don't know what the right actions are, then that's a recipe for disaster. And I'll point this out right now that a lot of the trepidation that you feel, a lot of that fear of failure that you feel right now, it's not exactly a fear of failure. It's just that you know you don't know what you're doing, that you're kind of winging it, making it up as you go along. And again, for a hobby business, it's perfectly fine to wing it. If you just kind of, you know, trying to make a little bit here and there and you're not really trying to build it to a legacy, build it to an empire or whatever that goal is for you, then it's OK to wing it, I guess. But if you have a dream of walking away from your day job this year, maybe next year. If you have that as your dream, you need to do more than wing it. You need to get into positive right action, following a step-by-step -step game plan that's outlined by people who have gone before you so that you don't have to make those expensive and time-consuming mistakes. Because a lot of the work that you see entrepreneurs doing in the beginning, some people are going to get mad about it, but I'm just going to say it. They're screwing up stuff that doesn't have to be screwed up. They're doing, they're making unnecessary and avoidable mistakes, recreating the wheel, not 
getting aligned with people who know what's going on to give them an action plan for success, trying to piece it together from here and there on YouTube and on this website and in that Facebook group and here and there, but not really having a game plan that says, here's what I do first, here's what I do next, et cetera, et cetera. So some of the hopelessness that you feel as you're in your day job that's making it difficult to survive is that you, you know deep down that what you're doing is not likely to actually help you replace your job, your income, to where you can go out on your own. You got a great idea. You've got a phenomenal product. Maybe you've got a Shopify site or some other e-commerce site, but you know with the way sales are trickling in, it's never going to get to the place where you can replace your 40, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollar job, 80, 100, whatever it is that you make. You know that it's going to take more than the little doing it yourself that you've been doing to to turn that corner. And so that's why it makes it so difficult to because uh, to survive your day job is because even as you're telling yourself, one day I'm going to be out of here, you know, in your heart of hearts, you have no idea how to actually make that happen. And continuing to do the, the what is it that Einstein said, doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results is his was his definition of insanity. And he was right. So if what you're doing is making it is making it seem like you have, will never be able to get away from your job. That's why it's difficult. Remember what I said at the beginning, when you see the light at the end of the tunnel, you can put up with anything. Boss come in there talking crazy. You can just let it roll off your back. They don't give you the increase or that promotion you deserve. When you know you're following a step-by-step -step game plan that's going to get you out of there in six months, you're like, okay, <laughs> you, you don't, you don't get upset with that stuff anymore. That's how you survive your day job. Having an actionable plan that has been proven to work to get your business, your boutique or your shop open and ready to roll in, in practically overnight. That's what makes you to where that stuff doesn't bother you anymore. So you need to be in positive right action on a consistent basis, following a step-by-step -step game plan that's going to work. And then the last thing you need to do to survive your day job is to be accountable. At the end of the day, if you decide right now, I'm done with entrepreneurship. It doesn't work for me. I don't feel like doing it. It's too much work. Whatever you decide and you decide not to build your dream, who's really going to say anything to you? I mean, your spouse might kind of ask about it a little bit. Uh, maybe even some of the people who buy from you might and even some of your family might mention it. But who can really check you? Who can really say, no, you're going to do that business and actually be able to make you do it? Absolutely nobody. Absolutely nobody. You're a whole adult. And if you decide to give up on your on your dream, give up on your boutique, give up on your shop and say, I'm not going to do it anymore and sell all your stuff and get rid of it. Nobody's going to stop you. That's because it is literally it's almost impossible to hold oneself accountable, especially for something that is very difficult, that is very uncomfortable, that is very challenging, that is very scary, which is what entrepreneurship is. And if you don't have someone holding you accountable to do the things you say you're going to do, hold your feet to the fire and say, nope, we're not going to give up on your dream. Let's keep moving. Let's figure out what this challenge is. If you don't have that, you're going to give up. And that for many of you is why you've been dealing with this business idea of two, three, four years. I've heard people, I meet with some people, it's 10, 15 years. They've been wanting to do this business and they have not built their boutique. And it's not because they don't think it's a great idea. Your kid, they had, to, they had a dream when their kids were little that one day this business would allow them to spend more time with them. And now their kids are in high school and that window of opportunity has gone. So now, you know, they're already missing out on so many things that they could have taken care of years ago if they had somebody holding them accountable. See, the thing is, what I'm talking about today is a cohesive approach. It's not just about obsessing over your dream if you don't have positive right action that you're taking to actually fulfill it. It's not about just changing the people around you and getting around other winners. You have to have somebody in particular who is actually holding your feet to the fire, holding your hand at every step of the way, walking through the process with you. No matter how many times you watch them videos on YouTube or go to them people's websites, even go on their Facebook groups. When it comes down to it, when you have a question, it's a specific question at seven o'clock in the evening and you have another one the next day and you have another one the next day and you need help. You need to be talked down off the ledge the next day. They're not going to be able to help you. That's not what they do. They're just throwing information out there. They're just throwing advice out there. But if it doesn't work for you or if you need some help tweaking some stuff, they're not there for you. 
You need somebody to hold you accountable to keep, and you need to be able to depend on them to hold you accountable because here's, here's what's true. Like I said, you're an adult. You don't have to do this. You don't have to build a business. You can keep working your job until you retire, until whatever happens. And, and nobody in society is going to judge you because the majority of people in this society are not cut out for entrepreneurship. It's not for everybody. And that's okay. But if you don't have somebody to keep you on track, to move you steadily towards your goal, not just doing something every once in a while, I worked on it two months ago, I worked on it last week, but every single day you're working towards getting your grand opening day in place. If you don't have somebody holding you accountable, it's not going to happen. So without the step-by-step -step actions, you won't know what to do, but without the accountability, you're not going to stay on track because guess what? Life happens. You've got kids, maybe, or you've got a spouse, or you've got, you know, commitments at church, or you're in the community doing work, or you just, you're just tired, or whatever those things are that keep you from pursuing your dream. And so it's easy to let Monday and then Tuesday and then Wednesday and Thursday pass by and you say, well, I'll do something on the weekend. If you only work on something one out of seven days, it's going to take you seven times as long to get it fulfilled. And if you're already struggling to know what to do, and you've already been at it two, three years. And now we've said it's going to take you seven times as long. Like you need somebody to hold you accountable. You also need a step-by-step -step action plan. You also need to change the people you're around and get around winners who are specifically pouring into you. And you also need to obsess over your dream. And when those four things are in place, those four keys, you won't even worry about your day job, man. You'll be sitting in your cubicle like, no, 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 no. You'll be almost laughing. I'm not saying you get completely disengaged from your job because I wouldn't recommend that. You don't want to get fired before you're ready to leave, but you will be able to take it from a different perspective and accept things from a different perspective when you have a light at the end of the tunnel, when you know you're actually making progress towards fixing your problem and not just in a vague sense, but in a real way that's getting you real results. And if you are tired of being on your day job, always wondering, when is it going to happen for me? I don't know what I'm doing. Everybody's talking me out of it. I, all I can focus on is what's not working. And I don't seem to be motivated or sticking to it. If you are tired of being in that space and you're ready to fix it now, if you are ready to have your boutique or your shop ready to open this year and not just with little bitty few sales, but with, you know, sales that you can barely keep up with, with the customers are just crawling all over you, begging you for what you have. If you want that and you are ready to not just survive your day job, but set a day when you can walk away from it and make your big leap then I invite you to reach out and book a free breakthrough call with me at melaniehunter.com forward slash chat. That's Melanie with two L's, hunter.com forward slash chat. Fill out the application that pops up afterwards and we will get on the phone at the time you select and we're going to talk about, hey, what's been going on? How long have you been looking at this? How long have you been wanting to open your own uh, store or shop? What are the challenges? And then what's your dream? What do you, why do you want to do this? What are you trying to accomplish in your life that you haven't been able to get dialed in? But if you get this business to the six or seven figure level, the sky's the limit. What are those things that are driving you? And then what is it going to take to get you there as quickly and as profitably as possible? And if it turns out we're fit to work together, we're going to start you right now heading towards your dream in a magnificent way. And if not, I will steer you to what will serve you best. But either way, you're going to get the most value and clarity out of our time together. But it starts with the decision. Are you tired of dabbling? Are you tired of, you know, selling stuff out of the trunk of your car? Are you tired of hitting and missing? And sometimes you're doing it and sometimes you're not. And you don't know how to do it. Are you tired of the fear, the fear of failure stopping you time and time and time again? It's not going to fix itself. Einstein didn't already told you he was a brilliant man. He didn't already told you doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results is insane. What you're doing, if it's not working, but there's a solution out there that's just like what I just described, why wouldn't you give yourself a chance? Why wouldn't you give your dream a chance? Go to my calendar right now. I've got some time open in the next couple of business days where we can talk about what it's going to take to get you out of the I will one day, someday, if, if, if I get lucky enough stage and into the, I know it's going to happen and I know I'm doing what I need to do to make it happen right now. Book your call, melaniehunter.com forward slash chat, and we'll talk soon.
Again, it's been my joy to be with you today. Join us next week when we start our uh, International Melanated Liberation Summit featuring speakers from the United States, Puerto Rico, the United Kingdom. We're going to have a great time. You don't want to miss any of these phenomenal speakers. But so that you can join their ranks, it's not good enough to just watch other people talk about their dream. If you're ready to be on my summit next year talking about what your dream is, let's have a conversation. No more dabbling. No more just talking about it. It's time to be about it. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.